Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Be Heard, Women Empowering Women. And we are so thrilled today that our guest is Dr. Jean Petit. Did I say that right? Would you ask? Yes, that's perfect. <laughs> so proud of myself. And she's a project human rights consultant, um, an author. She has a blog. She has a beauty line, I believe, called Figgy Beauty. Um, yeah. And a, a University of Pretoria graduate. That's, is that in Portugal? No. Where is that? That's in South Africa. South Africa. Wonderful. Yeah. So, Dr. Shane, tell us a little bit about yourself that I didn't already cover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, my background is really in international human rights and criminal law. Um, but in 2015, I was diagnosed with panic disorder, which I severely mismanaged and really had a very hard struggle accepting. And then when we immigrated to Portugal in 2020, five days before the world stood still and everything closed down, <laughs> oh um, yeah, it was, I think it was a difficult year for everyone, but everything finally kind of caught up with me and all of my own traumas I didn't deal with a secondary trauma from the human rights work I was doing and we are meant to be here today together yeah <laughs> all I mean, the traction my, for sure <laughs> my consultancy did not do as well as I had hoped in Europe although mm -hmm. everything is still going well in Africa so I lost a very big part of my identity and kind of how I saw myself and defined myself twin sisters <laughs> I think we're twin sisters because 2020 same thing <clears throat> excuse me I've had breast cancer I've had chronic illness I've had mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with um, depression and anxiety disorder 30 years ago and my husband has Parkinson's and it's the progressive type so unfortunately 2020 for us was in the house don't go anywhere and my anxiety and depression came back in spades. Mm. But I knew I could tell because I know for me, excuse me, when I get depressed, it'll come out in anger. And I was being nasty to my husband. So I immediately sought help. And um, my therapist is the one that told me to start writing as an outlet. And I did. And in 2021, I published my self-published a book a memoir called um, Raised by Wolves, Trapped by Demons. <laughs> and yeah, because the wolves are my parents and the demons are the men. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I found myself, I relate to you, right? I found myself in a new career as an author and a podcaster. And I'm in my 70s. It's like, mm. but it it's not for financial gain I really am doing a lot of this to help women that are in situations that they would like to be out of whether they're yeah. physically abused or just not treated the way they should be so this is why I'm writing and having the podcast so I totally relate to what you went through it's so similar isn't it I'm yeah it's so weird <laughs> so let's talk about the law of attraction they said I think you mentioned that on one of your um, websites or interviews I saw something yeah so what it means to me or yes or what it means to you I, um I mean I really didn't actually understand the concept of it I've heard of it and mm -hmm. I've read about it but mm -hmm. the first time I really kind of got into it and asked about it I had already moved to a space where I had spoken to my psychiatrist and I had told him that I really need to take a break from therapy because I just need to be alone in my own mind a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. And he was so supportive of that. And he said that it's a good idea. And I tried, I, I shifted gears a little bit and I um, went to see a spiritual mentor who's such a big part of my life and who I'm so grateful for. And she actually reintroduced me to this concept of the law of attraction and manifestation. And when I was going through what I had hoped my life would be and what I see in my life now, I realized that I had been manifesting my entire life without knowing it and without understanding what it is. So now I can just be a lot more 
intentional about it mm -hmm. and really trying to so for example what I'm really working on really hard right now is attracting good nurturing uh, friendship relationships because I've always been in very one-sided relationships mm -hmm. my background and upbringing is very much emotional verbal physical abuse so I I just want to work on kind of sending that energy out there and just hoping I attract positive people with you no, know you don't hope you affirm it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I so understand this and um the whole trauma from childhood which when the one time I had gone somewhere for help in my adulthood and um people were talking about child abuse and there were kids and I said, well, I wasn't really abused. And then I started telling them about my home life. And they said, you're absolutely abused. Just because you didn't have cigarette burns on your arm doesn't mean you weren't abused. You know, it was verbal, yeah. emotional. So um, have you heard of the Unity Prayer New Thought Prayer Movement? It's based no. in Missouri. Um, it goes back um, quite a few years, but this couple started. It's a new thought. Type. It's not religion. It's not religion. It's all about law of attraction. It's all about living your best life. It's it's yeah. all about um, that the universe will give you back what you give it. So, you know, like I think in, on the whole planet, planet, I think 90% of the people on the planet are always in their head, okay? Mm. They don't take the time to pray. And when I say pray, I don't mean religious prayer. I mean just even meditation, like yeah. sit still. So wouldn't it be wonderful if, if for five minutes, one day, the whole world just sat there in meditation, like yeah. I think it would have this calming, energetic effect on the planet, you know, so that's, um, instead of a church, I go to Unity of the Palm Beaches, mm -hmm. and that's where we talk about these things, mm -hmm. and law of attraction fits right into our principles, um, so do you think, being that we both have these changes in our careers at a certain time in our life, you get a lot younger than me, do you think it's easier to make that change when you're in a certain status? Like, in other words, I couldn't have made this shift when I was younger. I wouldn't have been financially or emotionally ready. So do you think you were just at a place where you could make that shift? Hmm. You, you know, know I think it think depends about. on... The type of person you are, like, are you a perfectionist, uh, a type personality, um, maybe anxious, but I, I honestly don't think that there's ever a good time in your life to make big changes. There's always going to be something. I mean, it's either that you just got out of university and you need to make your first paycheck to make ends meet, mm -hmm. or you just bought a house with your new husband and you have a baby on the way. Um, for me, we just immigrated to an entirely new country and now we're cutting wow. off one salary so I don't really believe that there is a good time to make changes, but I believe life forces you to do it when you are ready to do it, even though you don't feel ready. Because to me, this felt like a horrifying punishment. And I was, I really struggled to get through it. Now, looking back on it, I understand what an amazing gift it was because yes. I would never have found yeah. it or started Figgy yeah. if that did not happen. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I don't think there's ever a good time, no, but I, I don't think, think you we said get something. To the <laughs> you said something in there that uh, struck a note with me because sometimes you make the change even though you don't think you're ready for it. And <clears throat> when I was married the second time to my first husband, okay, I had another husband and a drink. Yeah, I just it's because I was accepting inappropriate behavior as as if it was appropriate. Okay, mm -hmm. and this was my cycle of going back to the same patterns all the time. And he was begging to come back, begging to come back. He was um, a rampant cheater, <laughs> just oh, terrible. No. Yeah. And I remember thinking, you know, I know I love him, but I have to love myself more. Mm. And it was the hardest thing I think I ever did because there was a time in my life when I really believed flaws and all that he was my soulmate, even though he was very damaged. So that was a big turn. Now, I'm not saying my life turned to, you know, roses the next day. Mm -hmm. It did not, did not. But I did go back to school. I got a college degree. 
and I had two little children and no child support. Mm. But I, that was the path I decided to take a very hard path at the time, you know. Mm. And then I found later, even when I met my present husband, who I'm with 34 years. So wow, congratulations. Say, I always say that means it wasn't me, it was them. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I had a guy break up with me once and he said that to me. He says, it's not you, it's me. And I hated that. Oh gosh, yeah, that's the <laughs> That's like the worst cop out. <laughs> anyway, do you think we can have it all? Like a career, family life, a loving relationship? I mean, or do you think balance in life is a myth? Yeah, I don't believe in balance because balance made my anxiety so much worse it put me in such a horrible place especially once I had my daughter and I was still traveling for my human rights consultancy which was constant I honestly don't think we can have it all and I don't think I think yeah. what we should rather be asking ourselves is why do you want it all exactly. all is so much it's so stressful your it's career, so overwhelming <laughs> your career, yes your career sounds very 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 stressful I mean I'm sure it was rewarding I know it was rewarding yeah. but um, that is something that I had to struggle with too because uh, my therapist told me I'm a rescuer Okay, I'm a rescuer, I'm a caretaker, or whatever. And then I keep doing something, whether it's for a nonprofit or whatever. And whether it's whether I feel appreciated or not, I keep doing it. Like, I don't have to do everything. And I don't have to solve every problem. And mm -hmm. I am type A and perfectionist. So it's really hard. She told me the other day, take your cape off. You're not superwoman. That yeah, was funny. You know what's so so great about that is I I have to preface that by saying that I am unbelievably lucky to have the support system I do in my husband. But once you start doing that and you realize why would I want it all? It's so overwhelming. It's like you start to see how much help is available to you. Mm -hmm. Like so many nights. And I mean, I'm a horrible cook. My husband <laughs> is an amazing chef and so many nights a week when I have to work late, you know, he'll cook. And oh. I would and it's something small, but you would think yeah. Yeah. I always have to do it. <laughs> all of this in a day. You know, I, I I wanted to be the one that gets my little girl out to school dressed perfectly. I want to make dinner and have it on the table for my family, but I still want to be a success and I want to work hard. And you don't have to do it all. Sometimes that's why we have other people to help us carry that burden. Or you don't have to do it perfect either. That's, I think that's the problem with me. It's like when I do volunteer to do something, I feel like I have to do this excellent, flawless job. Yeah. And then the stress on me is overwhelming. And uh, I just, the last few months, got really hit with a lot of, um, you know, bronchitis and different stress related things that you will get. And it knocked the wind out of my sails. And I stepped back from a couple of things and it was really hard to do that. Um, but I did it. And, you know, I think I've read too that you said that you are a spiritual, not religious person because we were talking about that unity movement. Yeah. So what, how do you mean that? Like, how do you portray that? You know, one of the good things my dad actually told me once is you should never talk about religion and politics and social situations yeah, exactly. because it never ends well. Um, but the reason why I chose to wrote that blog, uh, to write that blog post is because of just at that stage, the amount of judgment that was coming to me from family member members, close loved ones, because I didn't necessarily see the spiritual world as they did. Mm -hmm. And I come from a very um, diverse upbringing. My parent, my dad was an atheist. My stepmom was very airy fairy. Um, <laughs> my mom was Methodist and, mm. and my yeah, stepdad was Orthodox religious. So I had all of these different influences, which I appreciate because that taught me to see things differently. And then with my human rights background, I got to see the worst and the best of human suffering, regardless of how you believe and who you believe in. So for me, I always say the most important thing is 
are you a good person at the core of who you are? Are you a good person? Mm -hmm. Are you happy? And are you healthy? The rest I don't care about because it's actually, for me, it's all just love. Yeah. If we can just treat each other with love and respect, whether I call it God or the universe or the divine, or I believe in energy or not, it, it for me, it doesn't matter. It's just how mm -hmm. I find my path to a deeper inner peace and understanding. And um, yeah. that's just really the way I look at it. I, uh, <clears throat> I had gotten sober 32 years ago, which was a big part of the healing journey. Yeah. Because if I did not get sober, I would have never been able to heal the things I needed to heal because that was like, I was self-medicating, you know. Mm -hmm. And through being sober all those years, um, my mind had opened up to more philosophies. I had been raised Catholic, but I had also been hurt and shamed by the Catholic Church when I divorced. Mm -hmm. You know, that was like, oh, you're not you're not good enough anymore because you got divorced. You can't have sacraments and things like that. So when I found this Unity Church, I was like, wow, their principles, I don't know how much you know about AA, but their principles were a lot like the 12 steps of AA. So I felt like I was home, you know? Mm. And, um, and our minister's gay. And you don't see that too often in any church, you know? Yeah. He's gay. And he'll often say to us, look, we're going to talk about God, but it's not a, it's not that guy up in the sky. He said, there's not some guy in the sky that's going to solve your problems or punish you when you're wrong. And I love that. Mm -hmm. and he comes at it from a different, more divine, energetic way of looking at it, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I have, I'm interested in um, this too, because we have people that were Jewish in that congregation. We have people that were Catholic, like they all love it. They, even though they have these other strong things they were taught as a child, or maybe even young adulthood, it's such a freeing, open, loving concept. And mm -hmm. that's what I thought about when I read what you said about your spiritual, not religious, that yeah. comparison. Yeah. So what do you think, uh, Jean, is the biggest obstacle that you had to overcome in your life so far? I know you told me a lot of things, but which ones are like really hard? You know, there are so many things that I can um, list, but I think the worst for me so far that has had the, the, the most kind of lasting impact on my life is taking ownership and believing in my own reality because of my past life experiences and how I grew up, I was very often placed in a situation where I was made to doubt my own reality or how I perceived things or events. And it made me, it really destroyed my self-confidence in every area of my life. And it made me always doubt myself, doubt yes. myself in a business meeting, doubt myself yes. as a mother, doubt myself in my marriage. And it's something I still need to remind myself of every single day is, you know, it matters how I perceived something and it matters how that made me feel. Exactly. And I don't have to explain that because that's how it made me feel. Yeah. And that has had an incredible impact on my life. I really do still struggle with I that. I think that's a, a good point. I remember someone saying once, your opinion of me is none of my business. Yeah. I like well that. said. And um, those sometimes those little short things. But I think too that, um, you know, a couple years ago, I was telling someone about someone in my family. Um, that, you know, the family dynamic was not a good one. And I said, oh, yeah, she's gaslighting it. And they had never heard that before. Have you heard that word? Yes. Gaslighting. I am it, very I familiar with it. Yes, <laughs> what you're talking about, what you're about to do. Yes. So um, the funny thing about that is, after that, everywhere you look, they're, they were just using that word gaslighting. And I'm like, okay, they know it now. <laughs> but um, it's true. People tell you things and they deny your reality. And yeah. the hurt that's in us as a, 
child that hasn't healed that gets triggered and we believe them. And unfortunately, those situations, well, at least for me, more often than not, were already perpetuated by an emotional abuser, a manipulative individual that had a lot of authority over me. And I think if you combine those two things, it just, it really just shatters your sense of self and what space you take up in the world and you're allowed to take up in the world. (laughs) I've been told that I'm resilient. And what I hear from you is resilience. Oh, thank so you. I do. But how do you how do you rate that as a quality of something that women need? Resilience. Resilience? Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, I'm always weary of these. I call them power words because society mm. deems them to be power words, mm. and I'm just always careful of setting standards for others that are so unachievable. You know everybody has their own powers and strengths and just because the world says you need to be resilient or good at persevering doesn't mean you mm-hmm. necessarily have to be that if 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 you are really good at it and you know how to balance it that's wonderful but a lot of times with women we tend to go a little bit over overboard or extreme and mm-hmm. you know then you don't want to be hiding emotions or not dealing with things that you need to be dealing with. Um, And you don't want people to be taking advantage of you because you're the resilient one. So you can handle so much more. Um, And that's what's happened to me, unfortunately. So (laughs) that's where I was going with it because, you know, I moved to an over 55 community uh, 20 years ago and join different women's clubs and, you know, nonprofits and helpful things I was doing, but I am resourceful. So it got to the point where they'd say, oh, ask Marie, ask Marie, ask Marie, mm-hmm. you know? So all of a sudden I'm like doing all the research and referrals for people and, and everything. And it did get overwhelming, mm-hmm. it got overwhelming because I, at first you say, oh, it's nice that they think I, I know so much and I can help them. But then it gets overwhelming because the phone rings and you go, oh, what does this person want? You know, yeah. and um, I, I had to really look at that. Like, was I trying to prove something or was I really in my heart just trying to be a helpful person? Because mm. in a way, there's a little fine line there, too. You know, mm. um, and that's what an overachiever is, too, which I've been. My whole life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm the kid that always sat up front. Yeah, me too. Me too. I, know, I, I can't help it. But um, and that's OK, because I always love to learn. And I was like a sponge when I was younger. And I'm glad that I was that way. And to become our very best person that we're meant to be, whatever you want to call it, I think we and you said this, I think we have to start with how we feel about ourselves. Mm. You know, because if you don't think that you are a wonderful human being and you are meant to be here then you have work to do you have to love yourself and yeah hard for some people yeah very hard yes I mean I went through it mm. I went through it um so I want to talk about Figgy let's talk yeah. about Figgy for <laughs> <laughs> tell us about that So Figgy was born from what I call the breaking. And this is just this period after we had moved here where I felt like everything had just come crushing down. In Portugal. Yes. Yes. And I needed to create something new. And the thing about Figgy is that everything about it was suddenly the safe space where I could go to, to be open about my panic disorder, because a lot of what had led to the mismanagement of it was the shame and the hiding of it, because I was in a very um, highly driven, highly stressed professional legal environment. There is no space for something like that because you're either on the bus or off the bus. There's no, like, we'll wait around for you. Mm -hmm. So I remember the first thing when we got my diagnosis, I said to my husband is no one could know. We cannot, we can't tell people this. I literally mentor people for a living. They cannot know I have anxiety. This is so um, everything I did with Figgy was 
to release myself from that shame and to appeal to something that significantly changed in my life since panic disorder. I think being, people think if you have panic disorder, you have panic attacks, but it's so much more than that. It's yeah. everything that comes with that. Mm -hmm. And one of the main, main symptoms for me was really sensitive skin. And I'd always loved skincare. I always thought that it would have been my second calling. And I went back to school and did my certificate in cosmetic chemistry. And I worked to really create something that was selfishly meant for me to work for me. <laughs> yes. Well, you have a um, light complexion, so it might work for me too. <laughs> yeah, no. So what no. are some of the things in your line that you have, like moisturizer or yeah, it's a very minimalist line because it's really geared towards sensitive skin and getting you back into a good space. So taking it down to the basics, all of the products have South African rooibos uh, extra extracts in it. I don't know if you've ever had the tea. No, no. Uh, it's a very famous tea. You can also you also call it red bush tea, and it's got red bush tea. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. it has incredible psych scientific evidence behind it. Um, and one of the things that it's really good at is it's a really great anti-inflammatory. So it calms the skin and it soothes the skin and, um, it's proven. I mean, yeah, it's I meant to be proven. here today because I have rosacea. <laughs> I have rosacea. I would yeah, it's wonderful. Like, it's wonderful oh for sensitive skin, uh, related, uh, uh, issues as well, like rosacea and eczema. And we're in the process of getting approved by the eczema association and um so we have a day cream in the mornings i wash with water i add the day cream which is very hydrating and moisturizing it has niacinamide to even the skin tone and it has really great antioxidants for sensitive skin to help boost your sunscreen okay. and in the evening we have a double cleanse so it's first the oil balm to remove all the makeup and oily impurities then the gel cleanser to remove the rest mm -hmm. and a super rich, thick, luxurious evening repair cream. Mm, that's lovely. <laughs> I'm going to have to go get some right after we finish <laughs> here. No, it, it's amazing. Like, I'm really lucky as far as aging goes. I don't look 75 years old. No, you look wonderful. Thank you. But that's why I say it. It's like I throw the hook out there. <laughs> the compliment. But um, it's genetics. It's partly genetics, you know, but I... I never smoked, never oh, smoked, yeah. and I hate it laying in the sun. And I mm -hmm. think both of those things are important. But right now, uh, living in Florida, I've had skin cancer three times. So oh, no. I am very, yeah, it's fine. I had the most surgery, but I'm very fair. And um, I have to really, I don't want to wear a hat, you know, but I have to take care of myself because that's important. So yes. let me, let's, I think we can get one more little topic in here. Oh, first of all, to look up your products, do you have a website we can go to? Yes, there's an online store and oh, cool. um, you can order a free starter kit if you want to try the range before committing to it. There's a $8 shipping fee for the, for the package and it comes with two of each product. So you can try okay. all of them and see so if it works. So you just go to figgy.com or... Yeah, it's Figgy Life, F I G G I Life dot com, and you'll find a link to the store, or you can just go to figgy dot um, oh, you and you will still find the US store there. Sounds good. So, another thing, too, with the stress and anxiety, have you tried yoga for that? Yes, I do. I have. Uh, <laughs> That's what I was saying about people think it's you have panic attacks, but it's everything surrounding that. So it's really, really a lifestyle. I have to work at it every single day, every morning I get up, mm -hmm. every night I go to bed. And one of the many things that I do to try and always stay in more of a balanced space is yoga. It really has helped me. I love the movement and the flow. I like how meditative those movements feel. And I don't go to a gym. Uh, I love having that moment be just me yeah. in the silence of my body. and Mindfulness, the the just peace. Yes. Well, like, yes. like I was talking about, just to be quiet. Just being quiet is a form of prayer, you know. Um, I think that's great. And I, what I'm interested in today, too, is the doctors used to be very, like, 
this is medical and this is what you do. And now they're getting more holistic because my cardiologist told me to do yoga, which I yeah. thought, I was like, really? Your cardiologist are going to tell you yoga and not give me a pill. <laughs> that's wonderful. And I think that's why I also have such a good relationship with my psychiatrist, because I do believe that, unfortunately for me, I have to take medication to control my disorder. I do too. I do too. But um, he works with me. You know, I don't feel like I'm ever pressured to take more medication or if I'm going through a particularly hard time, you will hardly ever go like, oh, we should up your medication. He you will always have a things. conversation yeah. with me about yes. it. You know, and that makes yeah. me so much more comfortable. Well, I'm still changing. So, you know, you're you're way ahead of where I was. I don't know your age, but I would guess that you're way ahead of where I was. <laughs> and, um, you know, today it's, it's amazing that... Uh, then I'm even here that I have this beautiful life and I have to appreciate that every minute. And I would like to have you back on again because there's so much we can go into more. If you'd oh, like. wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much. That would yeah. be wonderful. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to send you a copy of my book. I have your email. Do you have a gift Kindle? Yes, I do. Right. I'm going to send you one as gift for coming today. Oh, and uh, you'll see how alike we really are <laughs> in a lot of ways. <laughs> thank you so much. And I'm so proud of you that you did so much in your life already. Thank you. Very thank proud you so of you. Much. Thanks again for coming. Thank you. We're going to close and I'll see you again. <laughs>